listeners that clauses one to three stand part. Madam Chair. I call the Honourable Chris <coughs> Madam Chair, we come to the summing up part of the debate, and all I can say is thank goodness for Jerry Brownlee. Uh, because, Madam Chair, at least he was here to call for a vote on the supplementary order paper put forward by the Honourable Paul Goldsmith that no one in the National Party wanted to speak to. They're so passionate were they about the issue that they didn't want to speak to it. So as we as we as we sum up, I'd accuse the member of many things, balance is not one of them. Uh, but, but Madam Chair, as we come to this summing up part of the debate. It's very clear that there are some themes that have emerged from this. There is only one side of the House that is actually willing to scrutinise the actions of the government, and that is this side of the House. Clearly not that side over there, despite the fact that that is actually their job. But that's OK. That's OK. We're getting used to that. The largest and laziest opposition New Zealand has ever seen. Uh, but, Madam Chair, there are also some other broad themes that have come out in this debate, one of which is that only members on this side of the House seem to be taking seriously the fact that we do have a responsibility to ensure the welfare of international students in New Zealand, and we do actually have a responsibility to crack down on some pretty dodgy practices that have been happening in the international education sector, because the only members who actually spoke to those issues even bothered to raise them in the House were members of Labour, New Zealand First and the Green Party, not a jot from the national uh, opposition on those matters, despite the fact that they are big and serious matters. So I think that we can draw that as a theme from this particular debate. Another theme that we can draw from the debate uh, is that now that they are in opposition and the Māori Party are out of Parliament, the National Party don't really care what happens to the Wānanga. Because the Wānanga have campaigned for a very long time to have the ability to apply to use the term university. It's not a guarantee, as I stressed earlier on, it's their ability to apply. And this was something that the national, uh, previous national government were encouraged to adopt by the Māori Party and one of their partners when they were in government. And now, of course, they've just completely forgotten all about that, now that the Māori Party are out of parliament and the National Party are free to revert to type. Uh, so interesting that they didn't have anything to say on those provisions at all. They didn't have anything to say on the provisions uh, around uh, providers who are ripping off the system by falsifying student records. I thought that was interesting, and I thank the members to my right uh, who took the time to scrutinise those provisions uh, in, the, in this particular bill. So overall, I think this, is, this bill is a positive development for the tertiary education system in New Zealand. It updates and modernises legislation. Another piece of uh, scrutiny that we received from the government side of the House was around the modernisation of meeting provisions for tertiary education institution councils. Nothing on the, on, the, on the National Party side of the House uh, with regard to those provisions. Of course, they're still figuring out, one or two members are still figuring out how to actually use their phones. Um, so I can understand why they found those uh, provisions slightly perplexing. Uh, but overall, uh, this is a good bill. And I welcome the National Party's support for it, uh, because I think it does uh, deliver welcome and needed changes to our education uh, legislation. I call the Honourable Tracy Martin. Uh, just a quick call. Uh